Good morning and good Christian friends rejoice, Jesus Christ is born. Even though Christmas is yesterday, Christmas tide continues on. And so we continue in our time together. We worship Christ, the newborn King, for joy to the world, the Lord is come. So we stand together. We sing as we begin our worship, joy to the world. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all 
in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. morning this fine day after Christmas. We have several that we need to keep in our prayers today uh, from our list that y'all received on Sunday mornings. Carrie Wong is uh, having some problems with an eye infection and still facing problems with her, her ankle as she heals. Uh, we need to keep her, we need to keep Lonzo Roberts in our prayers in his health issues that uh, contain him and keep him at home. Uh, we have several that, that need prayers. David Cozart's son-in-law, Barry Ward, is uh, in the hospital right now with COVID. Uh, his grandson, uh, Vance Redford, is, also has COVID. Uh, Ryan Darty. Uh, who is Brittany's husband, has come down with COVID. And Brittany thinks that uh, there's a possibility she's coming down with it. So we need to keep those in our prayers. Also, we have Chris Zapata's wife, who used to be here as a member. Uh, she's in the hospital, not non-respondent, and not expected to live. So uh, on a lighter note, uh, next week will be the first week uh, for our new pastor, Jordan, 
we're looking forward to that and uh, we hate to say it but we're losing uh, Larry and Marilyn you know it's been a pleasure to have y'all here and uh, just because you'll be leaving us and we pray that that you'll enjoy your retirement and we pray for your endeavors in the future uh, you're always a member of us always come back and uh, you're always welcome in this house of the Lord may we pray our Heavenly Father be with these have your hand upon them O Lord if it be in your will, Lord, lift them up and heal them and get them back to us. Uh, be with these that have COVID, heal them and return them to us as well. Uh, oversee their healing. Uh, we ask that uh, as Jordan comes in with his family next week, that uh, we lift him up and we ask for success in his ministry and hope for many years with him be with Larry and Marilyn as they uh, go back to their own church and, and enjoy retirement. We ask that you oversee them and keep a hand on them, O oh Lord, and always bring them back to our house when, when need be. In your name we pray, amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life.
Well, first, I would be uh, remiss to say, I hope y'all all had a wonderful Christmas. Um, for those of y'all who could be here with us today, I'm so glad that y'all could worship here with us today. Um, today is uh, a bittersweet day. I think we can kind of all uh, reflect on that. Um, but I don't really want to focus on that at this moment. Um, we know that today is Larry's last day. And next week, we are going to have a new pastor here, uh, Jordan. Um, and I was really reflecting over it. Um, and a a as we've gone through this process, uh, several things we have heard and wisdom from other pastors and other people who've gone through this process before, um, they've said something very that stood out to me multiple times. And they said, you know what? You're never going to be able to replace your last pastor. Right. There, there is, Larry did not come in here to replace Sam. He couldn't. Sam Underwood had his gifts and his talents. And, and, and there are things that, you know, memories that, that Larry could never honestly, let's be fair, live up to in that sense. And the same thing is going to come in here with Jordan, right? Jordan is going to come up here and he can't live up to Larry. Because Larry has guided us and, and pushed us through a very hard time in our church. Um, through the loss of a pastor, through the, the midst of a pandemic. Um, and he has taken the realm or the helm and just steered us to calmer waters. Um, but that transformation, I think, is so important for us to understand. Um, it's so important that that process, get the baton get handed off well. Right? When you're running that race, you don't want to slow down when, that, when you're handing it off to the next person. You need to be able to continue that running and continue that movement, the momentum forward. And I know Larry talking to him, that's what he wants for this church, is that we don't slow down, that God continues to do a mighty thing here at First Baptist Farmers Branch. And that wherever we do, whatever we go, that with Jordan, wherever he guides us, that we follow God and that we do a mighty work on his behalf. So that's kind of what I want us to pray about today is this transition that God continually reminds us that while we have been so blessed to be led by a very godly man uh, and, and, and had a very godly family come in with uh, us and just lead us in this hard time. But at the same time, I pray that the transition with Jordan becomes a beautiful transition and that God continues to do a mighty work. Will you all pray with me? Dear God, thank you. Thank you. We understand that everything is in your hands. None of this was by coincidence. It was all by your design. That you have given us leadership and people to, to help us along the way and guide us. Um, and I pray that you continually use us for Farmer's Branch. That our ministry continues to grow and is strengthened and that when we look back we can see that you have woven this beautiful picture together that you have created something magnificent and beautiful and you used all of us here and you used the Davises and you used the Whittingtons and you used all of us in this church to do something great Lord we love you and we say this in your name amen
Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and may we forget not all of his blessings, the benefits of what it is to walk with him, to follow him, to serve him. And uh, that is uh, a prayer, but it's also a wonderful call to the message uh, from the Lord today. It's, uh, the text is from the first chapter of the book of Colossians. It's in uh, verses 28 and 29. Uh, I think it speaks to a message, uh, a sermon. We like those on Sunday mornings. Uh, we want that. Uh, we also find today, I find, I believe I followed the leadership of the Spirit in that it's a, uh, a sermon of exhortation, but it's also some personal words that are mixed in. Uh, I have talked with the uh, Spirit about this, so I don't have to go to the floor level and talk personally with you about it. I can talk from here uh, as the interim pastor. I can speak with you. I trust words of uh, encouragement and hope. That always makes a good sermon. That's what we've desired to have. That was the direction of Next Steps Committee, Replant Team. Uh, Always to be hopeful because that is what this season is all about, uh, is hope. And so uh, I, uh, I hope again if you feel uh, in your heart a little bit of that urge to smile or even laugh at something that might be said, you're not laughing at me, you feel free uh, to smile or to laugh. Uh, and parts that uh, you, if... Uh, if I cry, you just have to get through it, uh, okay? And so uh, it's been a wonderful experience uh, for Marilyn and me, but to honor the Father uh, and to bring glory to Jesus, his Son, our Savior, and to allow the Spirit to speak to us, let's begin with the uh, message from God's Word, Colossians, the first chapter, verses 28 uh, and 29. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church there, and uh, to the faithful and brothers, the faithful brothers and sisters uh, in the church in Colossae, uh, but to us today as well, he writes, um, "Since he is the one we proclaim, that would be Jesus, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously." contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Paul works to that end to present Jesus. And so I want to do that today by reminding us the Apostle Paul in what he says throughout uh, Galatians, Ephesians, here in Philippians and Colossians, especially here today, he reminds us that his motivation for all the things that he went through, whatever it was, his sufferings that he lists and that he names in uh, the book of Romans, all of the things that Paul went through, the motivation was to benefit the church. It was to honor God. It was to teach of God. It was to tell about Jesus and his death and his burial and his resurrection so that men might be right with the Father. Men, women, children could know Jesus as their Savior. And at the same time, though, he wanted the believers to be filled with what was necessary for their spiritual development. He wanted the people to know what it takes to mature in Christ, to develop in Christ. Now, make no mistake, the believers were to be filled with God, the Spirit, but they were to be filled with those things that helped them to mature and to advance in the cause of Christ. And so Paul wanted to expose them to this mystery, he calls it, this mysterion, this mystery of how it is that Christ in you is the hope of glory. It, it's a mystery somewhat. We accept it. We, we follow it. We live it out. But Christ in you, that's what happens when we say we accept Christ. We receive Jesus into our hearts into our lives. It means that he's in us. We carry him with us. Wherever we go, we take Christ. I think that's one of the beautiful things about the uh, uh, having communion with the church, having the Lord's Supper, 
uh, Jesus himself giving it to us is that we take it actually into us. The elements actually are taken into our physical bodies, much like a symbol of that we take Christ in us, the hope of glory. And he, he explains this as a mystery, but he wants us to know that that's what it is that we are about, we need to do. Christ in us, the hope of glory. I thank God for the past 18 months with you as uh, First Baptist Church of Farmers Branch. I thank God uh, for these past months. I pray that we have brought honor and glory to the living Lord Jesus. I sought to help uh, you with grief in the loss of your longtime pastor, beloved pastor in many ways because I enjoyed hearing those things I've shared with you before. I, I really like hearing uh, from a church, from church members who like their pastor. I hear from churches traveling up and down wherever I travel. A lot of churches don't like their pastor. And so uh, it, it's been great to hear of your love for Pastor Sam, for Ellen, for the family, all those things that are uh, a, a part of your history in that. I sought to help you with your grief because you were in grief. You needed to navigate the next steps and consider whatever options were viable uh, for this place, uh, this building, this people. Uh, I did not come in. Bob Dean didn't have. Uh, we didn't have from Tom Howe or uh, Clay Jacobson a script to follow. We really didn't have some kind of preconceived plan. Here's bottom line. Here's where we're headed. We, we just wanted to see what God had for the church. And so you as the people here needed to navigate next steps and consider whatever options uh, were viable for you. I don't know anyone uh, who got everything they wanted possibly. Uh, not saying that we were here to please everybody. We, we like that, we want to do that, but. I, I don't know all that you may have had in mind that uh, we were supposed to do, I was supposed to do, and you may, may not have gotten everything that you wanted. But I can share with the folks that we're still in this place. Uh, the plan is, doors are open next Sunday. We're here. You're here. Worship. You're First Baptist Church. We haven't changed the name. We haven't sold the building. We're here open for business, to put it in those terms. So uh, we are still here. Financial support from you as the members, added support from Texas Baptist, the ones who will come to join us along the way, the ones that I trust, I still pray for and believe they will give to the church and the ministries here that are not members. All of this is to the glory of God. And I pray above all, that we have been pleasing to him. I thank God for the past 18 months with you. I am uh, retiring again uh, from a position, uh, not a calling. In fact, the truth is that tomorrow um, uh, will be the first time in 53 years that Marilyn and I will both be retired at the same time. Uh, I retired, she was still working. Uh, then, uh, she, then I came here and then she retired, uh, causing her to say last night at the family Christmas time, uh, we are not too certain about what these days will bring, a little concerned in some ways, caused her to remark last night at the family Christmas time, she married me for better or for worse, but not for lunch, and so uh, we'll uh, we'll see uh, we'll see how that how that goes, how that works. Uh, but we're retiring. Uh, we both will be retired. We will return to South Garland Baptist Church, as Sean said, to teach and to worship uh, with a great deal of appreciation for the folks there that have walked with us during this journey. They have prayed for you. Uh, I'm grateful for their continued friendship and prayer support. Uh, for our church. Uh, they uh, offered to consider me as a deacon uh, there back in August or September sometime. I said no because I didn't know how long it would be here. 
but I'm grateful to return to that uh, fellowship. And after 27 years at a church, still be loved and invited back is, uh, is very comforting to us. And so uh, uh, we are glad to, to be a part of that there. I trust that there has been uh, some good that's been shared with you from the Lord through me uh, from the things I've said. Um, I really felt led. I like that who's your one. Uh, don't know that I've set the best example there, uh, but it's a good thing, still a good thing. And uh, continue to pray about that, look for yours. I'll, I will continue to look uh, for mine. I think uh, when I share with you about the 15 minutes of reading the Bible a day, I think that's a good thing. I, I hope that you can get back to that or you do it along the way. I haven't done it every single day, but I think it was a good thing to say to you. Uh, the plan for this new year for me is the one-year chronological Bible. Uh, I don't know if you've seen one of those. A lot of people are uh, promoting those through their television, radio ministries. Uh, they divide the Bible into readings daily based on the time that it was written. So you may not have necessarily, uh, you don't have in this Bible, I noticed, First Chronicles following or, or preceding Second Chronicles because they were written at different times. And so it helps you somewhat with the chronology and the, and the flow. Uh, and uh, I do it uh, because it was probably some of those things I was supposed to have learned in seminary and didn't, and now I have the opportunity to go back and kind of, kind of piece that together. Uh, I'm enjoying also this year with the Chronological Bible. I'm going to follow the prayer map for men. It's been a good experience for me this year. Uh, I've shared it with some others. I like it. It's a little booklet. You fill in the blanks. I like to write uh, for the prayer diary, prayer kind of thing. Uh, I write out things. I, I've learned to do it in what I call uh, Christian shorthand uh, because some of the things I pray about I don't want anybody else knowing about, and so I don't, uh, you know, spell them out, write them out. And, uh, but it's been a good uh, prayer guide for me. I do pray uh, for God's forgiveness for the things I've not said. I, I, I trust there have been... There has been good from what I have said, but I ask God's forgiveness for the things I've not said. Um, I uh, always ask God to direct my steps and to give the time allotment in service. Um, but I, I feel like there are things also that probably needed to be said uh, that I didn't say. Um, I think some is because um, we, we have here um, uh, a very strong congregation at the point of what you think and feel and believe that's needed for the church. And so I did not come along uh, to argue with you about those things. I believe that within the body of Christ there is room for everyone's thoughts and ideas and and uh, it's a privilege that we have to operate as a community so that what you sense in the Holy Spirit working in your life is a part of what is uh, is done in leading uh, the church uh, I, I think I have missed it in, in many regards uh, one regard is possibly with with some people uh, in our, our congregation. Um, I would love to be the type of minister, the type of pastor that's just, you know, hitting on all cylinders with every uh, single person. Uh, and this has been for me even more than I learned as a pastor in Garland, is that that's, that's really an impossibility. Uh, that's, that's more than human to be able to relate to everyone equally and everyone is just you know going to think my isn't he charming and all of those things it's probably not going to happen and it, it I sense that I haven't always been to everyone in our congregation uh, what what was going to connect with them I think also the same thing will be true for Pastor Jordan 
And I, I just pray and I ask uh, that you give him consideration that, you know, uh, if, if the fellow uh, doesn't know your name, if the man, the man of God, our new, our new pastor, if, if he doesn't know your name on the second week, uh, give him a third week. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he, he is human, and uh, give him the opportunity to connect with you uh, at the point of, of whatever happens. I guess I share this out of an, a personal experience that was mine. I had been pastor at South Garland Baptist Church six weeks, and I met a lady in the uh, Albertsons. I recognized her as one of the people attending our church, thought she was a member, um, but she said to me, uh, she was a church member, she had been attending, she knew I'd been at the church a short time, but I did not even know her name. And she was correct, I didn't know her name. But I'm thinking if you gave me a couple more weeks, and certainly after this encounter in the aisle at the Albertsons, I'm going to know uh, your name. So just, just be patient. Uh, Give Jordan a little of that time to uh, get to know you. Give yourself a little time to, to know him. Um, I'm not regretful at all for the hours uh, spent in service here. I think it is, uh, it's been a blessing of God, as I have said. I'm, I always want to give more time to the Savior, and um, I pray that I will be able to do that. Marilyn and I will return. We want to, uh, to visit uh, with you and see how things are coming uh, in the future. I uh, want to uh, say this uh, as well, part sermon, part speech, uh, part uh, proclamation, part personal. Uh, I think our reasons for being here, we've got to always keep in mind uh, why we're here, whether it's interim new pastor, new year, new day. Uh, keep in mind why we're here. And so I share with you the vision, which I will pray for you as a church. I think you're about, you're doing. I've tried to put into writing some things. Uh, I have these wonderful staff meetings uh, with the Father on Sunday evenings did it all the years I was pastor, it just kind of ends up being that way, then it became my practice. Uh, I just gather with, uh, with God in the presence of his Holy Spirit. I know that Jesus is there because I tell him about those things that uh, I'm grateful to him for, I think went well on Sunday. I tell him about those things if he could help me to do better. Uh, the ministry is something you never, uh, reach it and then it's forever yours you're always working on it like it's your jobs no doubt and so I would have these staff meetings with the Lord and so out of these Sunday night meetings with the Father I've come to share these things with you I, I think this is the mission of your church you're all already about it but I think the mission would be that we will reach and equip train people with the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout this uh, northwest part of Dallas County, throughout Farmers Branch. You're doing it, but I, I just encourage you to stay with that mission. There are people walking up and down our sidewalks, driving up and down our streets. They don't have the foggiest who Jesus Christ is. I've had enough uh, conversations with them. I don't know if uh, Vanessa or Pat or some of the others have told you. I. I, I have this uh, habit. I, I went across the street to the bakery. The habit is to get a, a little uh, pumpkin croissant thing in there and to um, get it with a Dr. Pepper. I don't know why I feel like this is confession, but uh, I, I went too often, I can tell you that. Uh, but I would go over there um, and it, calabasa, I learned pumpkin in Spanish, calabasa. And uh, what's the little, what's the croissant thing? Though? What, there's a thing called empanada. I, so the lady behind the counter didn't speak 
English very well, so I, I kind of knew empanada. I knew calabasa. Am I saying it right? Is that pretty close? Okay. And so um, I'd hang out in there and eat that uh, croissant and, uh, and drink my Dr. Pepper. She has a high school age son. And um, we would talk. People would come in. A lot of workmen would stop off in there. Not many would stay, but while I'm sitting there, um, I would talk to them. Besides learning that um, that was a place to get these pumpkin croissants, and in the casual conversations I had with people in there, I can share with you as certainly as I stand before you today, there are people who don't know Jesus in this town. Had passing conversations. Some thought it was neat. One time I was... Uh, I had the Bible there not to show off. I just had the Bible with me. I needed to do something, I guess. And a fellow recognized it as a Bible. Uh, things people believe, you know. Some of them are in our families. The people need Jesus. And that's why our mission is to reach, equip, train people, to reach people with the gospel of Christ. Here's my vision, I pray, for the church that we will be a caring, thriving church that invites all people to experience the love and grace of Jesus Christ. This church is a church of love and grace and peace. When we consider what you've been through and the many opportunities that Satan has had to throw a wrench in the works here to divide the fellowship, and I know you've had things in the past that have divided you, but of all the times in these days that could have divided us, you remain a people of love and grace and peace. I commend you for that, and I just encourage you to share it with this part of Dallas County, with Farmers Branch, with the entire community that's around here because our vision is worth giving our lives to help people grow in their faith walk, and to uh, participate in, I think, our king's business. Uh, it's also uh, built on our vision, our mission is built on the values. Here are the values I think that you have and that are good to have. One is that the value of biblical truth. I, I know you to be people of the book. You believe the Bible. You want to teach it. You talk about it. You've had good experiences on Wednesday nights, the men's Bible study. There was a, uh, Ed Bufkins here, my friend, new, fairly new friend, here at the front, told about a Bible study that he would attend here in our church. Uh, folks from City Hall would be here, uh, men in the community. Uh, that was wonderful in itself to be in our church and to have a Bible study, but it says in the first place that you believe in the Bible. You teach the Bible. It's God's Word. It's God's Word for us to study and to learn from. That leads to the second value. It's a, a, a value of life transformation. Whatever your current situation is, financially, physically, socially, reputationally, there is something blessed and wonderful about the gospel that is transformative. It changes us. I've seen it like you have. Marriages are different when Christ is made the head of the home. It's absolutely amazing what God can do to change our hearts and our minds, our lives. And you believe in that as a value. I think you believe in healthy relationships. I think you believe in uh, excellence in ministry. Our prayer would be, Errol and I do pray together. We've prayed for you all individually. We've prayed for you as a church. Our prayer will be that you would know um, the presence of God, the strength of God, and that as you continue to walk with him in these days, that you would find what God has for you in the next steps as a replant, as continuing to grow in Jesus Christ.
You have been a gracious and good people, not just to us, but to one another and to this community. I pray it will continue. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful to you that you've chosen to work in pockets of people that come to be a fellowship, a church. And that out of that, Father, we have the opportunity to grow in our walk with one another and with you. And we have in the church the availability that's made possible for us to come and to study your word, to grow in Christ, to mature as your believers. Father, to be the kind of people that you want in this world, the kind of people that are so desperately needed. God, have mercy upon our land. Father, upon people who find in their normal, everyday existence that which is so far from you, that with which, no doubt, you are not pleased. And so, Father, help us to be the agents of change. Help us to be the people that because of what happens in our lives, we're really, we are willing to go out into the world and to share the blessed good news. Father, it seems to be kind of selfish, maybe, in some ways. But I pray your blessings on our church, this church. Father, bless in the leadership, the ones who respond to Jordan. Jordan, we pray for again and again. We pray for him, for Carlin, for Cooper, for what you will do through their lives, what you will do in us through them, what you will do to them through us. For them, Father, be their guide, be their constant source of strength, we ask. Bless in this time of dedication, I ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. For the invitation today, would you just uh, take a moment and think about 2022? Just uh, take a moment to say, God, whatever it holds, whatever may be found, experienced in this coming year, I give it to you. I give it to you now. Make of me what you want. Help me to be growing in my relationship with you. Help us to be closer, even though we might feel pretty close right now. Help us to be closer. Father, take the days of this coming year and make of it something that only you could do. Would you dedicate yourself in these moments to allow God's fingerprints to be all over your lives? Just to take your life and to say, here I am, Lord. Use me. Send me. Dedicate in this moment your lives, this place the ministry, what God will do in the coming year. If you want to pray about it, you want to talk to somebody about it, you want to join our church, you want to give your life to Jesus, we try never to close a meeting here without offering people the opportunity to come to Jesus. I'll be here at the front. I can pray with you. I can talk with you. And then we'll have a few moments in closing. But you do, as the Holy Spirit of God, lead you to do in this time of public invitation. Let's stand. Let's sing. Take my life, lead me.
something I, I want to uh, share with you as well. Uh, today, we have one that wants to present themselves, uh, himself, uh, for membership uh, in our church. It's called In Absentia. I've talked with uh, Ron, and uh, uh, it's a part of what Baptist churches do, but it's a word of joy for us as a church. This was going to be done in person, but uh, Ryan Darty wants to join our fellowship. Been part of another uh, church. He wants to join our church. Uh, we can do it, I believe. Ron? Yes. Uh, in absentia. New word I learned to pronounce. Uh, that means in absence, and uh, so Ron is presenting himself today for membership in our church. Uh, I have developed a, a friendship uh, uh, with Ryan. Did I say Ron somewhere in there? Ron, you're a member here, aren't you? Yeah, okay. Uh, Ryan, though, is the one that's presenting himself for membership. And Ryan has made a public profession of faith in Christ as his Savior. Uh, he has been immersed, baptized because of his profession of faith. And so he wants to be a part of us in joining our church uh, today. Uh, those are the things I believe that are necessary to present to the church. Uh, Ron, but we still want uh, the church's decision in this. And so uh, I am happy to do that uh, because it is, if you don't mind, as a point of privilege, if nothing else, uh, because of my friendship uh, with Ryan and with his, our talking about this actually for, for some time. And um, I think it's a wonderful way to uh, end the time with you as your interim pastor to present uh, Ryan Darty to uh, you for membership in this church. Uh, the way we typically do it is if you would uh, um, agree to this, accept Ryan membership in our church, if uh, you would just uh, raise your hand and say amen. All right, I, that's very wonderful. Thank you for understanding all that. A personal word to Ryan. Uh, Ryan, this has been uh, on video here. And so, Ryan, we welcome you into the membership of our church. Uh, it is great to have you. I have appreciated your friendship uh, like the church has in so many ways. So many of us are grateful to you. Thank you for sharing, Brittany, and leading us in these things, as I've shared with you before. Uh, thank you for allowing God to lead in your life. Lord bless you, young man. All right, so we wanted to to uh, do that. Um, I do want to ask, it's kind of a different deal. It's Sean? Oh, all right. That's okay. That you, you may. I just wanted to ask Marilyn if she'll be with me today. We'll meet you at the back. Okay. Is that all right? Absolutely. That's I probably idea. should ask her, though. Uh, is it all right? Is it all right? <laughs> Too late now, Marilyn. Uh, thank you. in the back. All right. That's uh, all. Thank you. Well, uh, it is, well, like I said earlier, a bittersweet moment. Uh, you get to come back up here. You don't yet. No. I don't, we do this all the time with all our visitors and guests. You get to stand up and be bragged on a little bit. Yeah. Um, it has been a hard 18 months, but, you know, like I said, uh, it has been a blessing to have the Davises and our family. Um, and I use the word family on purpose. Um, they have become a family to this church. And I'm so honored to just be able to learn and work with Larry 
um, through Zoom meetings and through just meeting up at the church and all that stuff. Um, when we first started looking for an interim pastor over 18 months ago, oh my gosh, that was so long ago. Um, I remember we were looking at several pastors um, and I, I would use phrases for each individual one. I said, this guy is, reminds me of this. This guy reminds me of this. And the word I used for Larry was, Larry is a pastor. Larry understands people. He understands people's hearts. And boy, Larry loves Jesus. Um, and he will let you know that. And that, that is such an important quality for, for me. And I think this whole church, we needed that love. We needed that guidance that you gave us. Um, and we're so forever thankful for that at this point. Um, we do have a little gift that I would like to, huh, say again? Oh, yes, Marilyn, I would like you to come up here too. Sorry, you get to go in the back and the front. <laughs> yes, so we have a little gift for y'all. Again, thank you so much, and I know you keep saying the word interim. You are our pastor. Well, I hope y'all, and I mean this, you enjoy your retirement. Uh, y'all have earned it. Y'all have helped us in such a mighty way. Um, I'd like to end us in a, in a quick word of scripture and then a quick prayer. And then, like you said, I want you to go to the back and let people say goodbye. Um, but it's a famous verse in the book of Numbers. It's a priestly breath blessing. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And, be, and may he be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Let's pray. God, you work in mysterious ways. The, the fact that you have given us the opportunity to grow with this wonderful family. To help us, guide us, to grow us in a way that, you know what, we didn't think was necessarily possible. It's been a hard couple of years, but this is one of those bright moments that we've been able to grow our family with the Davises. I thank you for what you've done and what you're going to continue to do through their ministry, even through retirement, because I know you're not done with them yet. And we love you and we say this in your name.